So here is my tumble dryer rotor with its magnetic ring on it. Now I'm getting quite proud of it actually. It's um, one of those things that I think is turning out much nicer than I thought it would do. So I thought I'd take the trouble of painting it. Because once you paint it, you hide absolutely everything. So I wanted to give you a look at the magnet ring before it gets painted and you can't see what it is. These magnets are just basic ceramic magnets. I think I bought about a hundred of them for 20 quid for first for magnets, something like that. But the magnets are 50 millimeters long 25 millimeters thick and 10 millimeters deep. They're polarized so that the whole of this face is north, the whole of this face is south, and they're arranged north, south, north, south, north, south. So it's as simple as that. Now, you can only get a certain amount of energy out of the wind, and that's what energy there is in the wind. And people have been saying that um, ceramic magnets, why don't you use neodymium magnets? Well, they're stupidly, stupidly expensive, and you wouldn't get that much benefit from it because you can only get out what's actually in there. If you put two powerful magnets on there, you're just wasting your time and your money because it's not going to do anything more. And the ceramic magnets, I don't know why people don't use them more. I don't know why it is whenever you see these wind generators, they're chock-a-block through near dimmium magnets. I recently took um, this apart, actually. It's a Dyson motor. It's uh, from a vacuum cleaner and it's a high-end, top-of-the-range motor. Extremely efficient, apparently, and when I pulled it apart, I found this in it. A ceramic magnet. So ceramic magnets are very venerable, and if you haven't been using them, you probably want to think about using them, because they're just absolutely brilliant. Now, of course, we've had lots and lots of comments on me building this kind of generator, and mostly I think it's because I commit two great heresies. The first one is that I don't necessarily think what I'm being told is right. I'll actually have a look for myself quite often. Now, maybe I'm wasting my time. That's probably so. But that is my time to waste and I don't really mind and I'm having a look at something I'm interested in. And that is heretical to some people and some people get really upset about that. But hey, chill. I'm doing what I think is right. It may not be what you think is right. Eh, such is life. People disagree with you. The other thing I tend to do, of course, is just do things because they're interesting. So this thing, it's not much chance that this is going to have the power output of the Hoover Dam. And I'm not really expecting it to light up Times Square on New Year's Eve anytime soon. I'm expecting some kind of lowish output out of it. And I'm okay with that. Because well, remember, what we're actually investigating is this idea of low torque, high speed, coreless rings. Will it do anything? If it'll do something, that is just awesome, because that is a completely different way of thinking about generators, it would seem. I like that idea, and I'm prepared to spend time and money looking at that idea. Now, generators and motors, of course, have quite a lot in common, but they are different things. Now, pole spacing and arrangement of coils is very, very significant within motors for power output. I don't think that necessarily translates to generators. Now again, could be wrong. Don't know, I wouldn't know unless I bothered to try and find out. So that's my second great heresy. I will do things because they're interesting rather than just having a direct point. Anyway, I thought I'd point those things out to you just out of interest really. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.